welcome back to my channel. So today we will be covering 9 Day Fiance Happy Liver After Season 4 Episode 9. Um, I think this season has 10 episodes. So um, hopefully um, the season is coming to an end because you're seeing like all these big dramas erupt. Um, and you're kind of getting to know whether the couples are going to stay or if they're going to leave. So, <clears throat> there was drama here, but, um, there was still a lot of sh stuff that I didn't want to see as well. So we didn't see Nicole and Azen once again, but we're going to see them in the next episode. There really was no reason for her to be, um in this season because this scene is, this season's about happily ever after. You're already married, you've done the 90 days. And Nicole still hasn't even gotten to the point where she's able to do 90 days, much less live happily ever after. So it's kind of pointless for her to be on that show. She should be on like the other way and just have her say she's gonna live there and come back, but it's whatever. So I'll go, I'll go, um, basically start with the couples that, like, I didn't really care for. So let's start with Colt and Larissa. So as we already know, Larissa gets locked up. Colt eventually, um, gets to pick Larissa up. Larissa's not talking to him. Um, he's telling Debbie what's going on. Debbie's not liking what she's hearing and she thinks that Larissa's toxic and blah, blah, blah. And, like, I don't know, Debbie could have a point because... There seems to be a lot of craziness that goes on when there's no cameras around. Um, Larissa is getting upset with Colt, telling him that he needs to stand up for her, and blah blah blah. And if this happens again, she's going to um, leave him. And she was explaining her plans that she wanted to get a green card so she could get a job so she can send for her kids and blah blah blah. And Colt did make a point that she never included him. But, like, sorry to break it to you, Colt, you were never included in the plans. You were there um, to supply the green card, and then after that, you can say it's up to God or what whatnot, but unfortunately, like, sh Colt, she was never going to stay with you. And even if she liked you, liked you, or really, really loved you, she's not staying with you and Debbie. You would have to pick one. So that's... That's kind of it with them. Um, also, you had um, Chantel and Pedro. So, once again, Chantel's ass is in Dominican, which, the Dominican, sorry, Republic, which I think she should have just went home. And when, when Pedro left, like, she should have been like, okay, there's no reason for me to be here. I'm going to leave. No, she wants to hang around. Pedro's being a good husband, and even though they might not be on speaking terms and they might be mad at each other, he's still there for her and to make he wants to still make sure that she's safe and everything. So uh, Chantal takes this opportunity to go and meet, um, her, I don't know, a friend or something in the Dominican, that a friend of Pedro's family, because he's here to spill all the tea. So they meet up, and then Chantal lets him know that um, he thinks that his sister, and Pedro's sister and Pedro's mom, is working against Chantal to break up the relationship because he wants they want Pedro to get the green card and, and be able to work and then send them money for their, their business. So then Chantal's like, oh my god, is that true? And yet... The guy told her that Pedro also would didn't know this was something that was like they def, they devised on their own, but I don't know. So um, he's I don't know why he never said anything before before they f fell in love before they got married. So it makes me debate how close of a friend they are. Um, and then what does she do? She goes and tells her parents. Um, her parents basically f figure out what's going on, but she doesn't admit it because she needs to talk to Pedro first. But 
like, I don't know why Chantal can't see that she does the exact same thing Pedro does. It's like a friggin' like, re they're like a reflection of each other. At least Pedro is a little bit more aware, and I feel like even though he, he believes he's right and he's on his, his family side, it's, it's sometimes the scale tips a bit Chantal's way. With Chantal, I don't feel the scales uh, tip Pedro's way. I think she's just strictly on her family side and F everybody else. So yeah, that was them. That was um, with them. And then you had um uh what am I what am I forgetting? So I said Larissa. Oh, Paolo and Russ. <laughs> That's to tell you that they're they're kind of forgettable. <laughs> um. Paula just has her baby. Um, she, she, everything she wanted, she had. She had natural birth at home. Baby was born. So all is well. Baby's healthy. That's all you really need to know. Um, and they're kind of bickering a little bit as first-time parents. But that's basically it. It became like a baby story. Um, TLC went back to their roots for 2.5 seconds. Um, so we had the two big stories today. So I'm going to talk about the first one, Andre and Elizabeth. So every week I feel like, or every video, I keep talking about how Andre is very, like, delusional. Like, he, he's, he's psycho. He's really crazy. Sorry about that. My, um, my battery was dead. So, um, like I was saying, Andre is really crazy and... I don't know. I don't know how Elizabeth is able to put up with him on a daily basis. So his family, not his family, his father is coming to stay with them for two months and he hasn't traveled in a very, very long time, no we've left um, to go to, I, I'll just say another continent. Um, so this is going to be a culture shock plus he doesn't speak English. So everything is fine and dandy. He speak, he spoke to his father and everything. Then he finds out that his father missed his flight. So his father's going from, I guess, Moldova to Turkey, then New York, then Florida. So um, it's hard to tell with certain scenes because you're seeing things take place in Dominican, in Florida, but it's actually winter time when they're filming it because even when Paolo's son is born, he's born on January 1st, so they're in January and it's winter time. So um, it's winter where he lives due to snow, weather, different things. He's He was um, stuck in, I guess, New York or Turkey, one of those places. So then Andre took it upon himself to go and um, meet his father in New York. So okay, hi, it's me again. So hopefully this battery that I've changed is fully charged. But like I was saying, he's decided to go to Florida. No, sorry, to meet him in New York, so I guess they can be together when they go to Florida. Um, I don't know his father, and I don't know how his father um, is, could react to this, but he ends up telling Elizabeth that we need to that they need to spend six hundred dollars on a ticket for him to fly, like a fifteen-hour flight in total. So. They don't have the money, and they haven't had the money in a very long time. They're always complaining about money. See, if they were still living in that house rent-free, there wouldn't be a problem, but whatever. So he he makes it makes it like like a fact that like we're buying I'm buying this ticket, I'm going, I'm gonna see him. And she's like, you know, it's expensive. Why don't I ask my father to? And he was like, no, you're not asking her, blah, 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 blah. Oh, it's just six hundred dollars. It's just nothing. Like, like you can say it's just six hundred six hundred dollars when you have a hundred thousand dollars, not when you're struggling to pay twelve hundred dollars a month. Six hundred dollars is a lot. 
especially for someone who's not doing steady work, doing the handy handyman thing. So like, <laughs> let me understand. He was being really, really rude to her and basically telling her like, I'm gonna do this. This is something that I'm gonna do, and we will just come up with the money. The money will just enter in a bank accounts randomly. So she's arguing with him, and then he's like, go pack my clothes, like, like, and I'm just like, excuse me? The way he's speaking to her, he's so rude. But then you see her go get up and go do it. I'm like, you know what, you guys deserve each other. I'm good. You guys deserve each other, because that, the way he was talking to her, the way he was acting, the way he was approaching things was so wrong. Anyways, he meets his father. You can tell that his father is way different than Andre. His father seems much more peaceful, more calm, more relaxed. So he's trying to kind of like show his dad all these things and his dad is happy, but his dad's also like, <laughs> okay, chill. So he shows his dad, like, I guess the American lifestyle. And they go to restaurants and they sit down and they start talking. They start talking. He starts telling him about Elizabeth's family and hopefully they don't treat you the way they treat like blah blah. Like I don't know why he was he was starting crap. Because first of all, your dad doesn't know these people. So your dad doesn't have any preconceived notions of these people he's never met before. And second of all, his dad can't communicate with them. So, I can't imagine them being upset with the dad if they can't speak with each other. So, he's just getting on my nerves and I'm ready for them to be off my screen. Because he's being so extra for no reason. And then for him, he's like, I don't know what he's talking about. When it's my family, when, I, when we, we need the money, I'm just going to take it from our accounts. Ugh, he gets on my nerves. And then last but not least, we're going to do Ashley and Jay. So, uh, I thought this couple was very boring for a very long time, and don't get me wrong, they still are. Until episode 9 is when there's actually some drama. It is revealed to the world that Jay cheated. Not suspected cheating, not flirting, not emotional connection like physically cheated this is how the story started so when I saw the preview and stuff I thought to myself why did his buddies or like why did the barbershop people tell her because they don't owe any loyalty to Ashley because they're Jay's friends and then plus like also when you want to stay out of someone's business you just kind of let them handle it so I was like confused on why the barbershop was involved. So then Ashley reached out to them to ask them like, hey, I've seen this girl like stuff, I've seen this girl, I'm suspicious, so is that, has anything happened, blah blah blah. It seems like that's a place where he, I guess, hangs out a lot. If everything was okay, they would have been like, uh, you know, everything's cool, like it's whatever. But no, they called her in there, and like she's already on the verge of tears, on the verge of breaking down, and she's like, okay, you, you've called me here, what do you what do you need to tell me? So she's like waiting, and basically the owner says, so Jay was using the shop to do tattoos on the side. There was a cookout beforehand, and Jay met this girl. I guess. So they arrange for them to go to the barbershop to do the tattoo. You do a tattoo in a room, so they had a room, and I guess he was doing the tattoo. According to Jay, she asked if she could give him fellatio, I'm just gonna call it that now, and I'm assuming Jay said sure, because they got up from where they were, and they ended up going to the washroom and having sex. If that was another issue, um, 
they were having sex in <laughs> a place where there's only one bathroom. So obviously, and this is not like they're alone, they're in a shop where there's multiple customers. Somebody wanted to go use the washroom. It wouldn't take a rocket science a scientist to figure out what would be going on. So, Jay could be heard having sex. And then that's why the barber yoked him up. <coughs> Sorry. Yoked him up and kicked him out because he's like, Yo, what are you doing in my business? This is a place of like work. Why are you coming here and sleeping with people? This is not a hotel. And like, that's why he was mad. And that's why he told Ashley. Don't get it twisted. That's the reason why he told Ashley. Yeah, I'm sh I sure know he wasn't telling Ashley when he they were telling Jay, like, Ooh, are you sure you want to get married and blah, blah, blah. You need to live your life. But I'm sure they didn't tell Ashley any of that. Then, um, because he affected the guy's business, is that's when he said something. Talking about, oh, if when I have a daughter and I would want, like, shut up. You know you weren't going to say anything if it wasn't for the way he disrespected your business. That's the only, re that's the only reason you said something. So then she, um, Ashley leaves and contacts Jay. And as soon as I heard, because I didn't know if it was for TV or stuff, I was just like, oh, is he making up stuff? Because I thought he was going to show them coming out of the bathroom or something, but no, they, he showed them fighting, which they could technically be fighting about anything. Ashley is calling Jay to confront him and he's not saying no. So if I've been accused of cheating or something that horrendous and I know I didn't do it, the first thing out of my mouth is going to be like, no I didn't do it. What are you talking about? You're crazy. He didn't say nothing. He didn't, he was listening and hang up phone listening and he finally um, spoke and admitted that everything Ashley said was true. I'm sorry. She said she wanted to S my D and then it just happened and beep beep blah blah. I was just like, Jay, if you don't just go pack up your things and go because Ashley's done with you. That little Twitter de Twitter, that little Tinder debacle, you already saw the ramifications of that situation. And then you decide to go and actually have sex with somebody? It's one thing to talk to somebody. You, I feel like you could get over that, but like actually have sex with somebody? That's fucking crazy. Especially because you know you're, running, you're on thin ice right now, and you're finally trying to repair your relationship. In my eyes, Jay, you weren't trying to repair nothing because you went from emotionally to physically. So, Ashley told him that he has to come and remove his clothes. She's there, she called up her girlfriend, they're packing up his stuff, talking crap about him, which they should. And um, they the cliffhanger is that Jay comes in the house to, I and then like confronts Ashley in some way, but I don't know. But I don't know what Jay was doing, and I don't know what he was thinking, but that was really, really dumb of him. But I'm very excited to see... Um, I want to see the finale of the last episode, but um, we'll see, because I want to focus on um, 90 Day Fiancé the other way, plus I see they're also bringing back a 90 Day Fiancé um, before the 90 Days, I believe, or one of those shows, but anyways, that concludes my recap of 90 Day Fiancé, Happy Ever After, Season 4, Episode 9, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, thanks for watching! a dumb cop, fucking sick and tired of it, maybe I could front look, maybe I could buy a zip, maybe I get fucked up, next time I could save some, why it's gotta be like this, why it's gotta be that way, put it inside, feel so rise up, banging on that line.